How's it going, strugglers? So we all know that one SpongeBob episode, Sailor Mouth, where SpongeBob and Patrick learn some choice words and they get into some comic mischief. My family didn't have cable or internet until I was 12 or 13. Uh, so I spent most of my childhood watching PBS Kids. Zoom, Cyber Chase, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman, you know, the classics. And when I was really young, I watched a lot of Arthur. Well, a few months ago when the entire internet was going buck wild over the fact that one of the characters was revealed to be gay, uh, over 20 years later. <laughs> Does J.K. Rowling work for PBS? It got me thinking about how long that show has been on the air. There are 22 seasons of Arthur and there was even a spinoff show with uh, Buster where he became like a vlogger or something. But out of all of those seasons, all of that Arthur that I watched as a kid, I only remember a handful of episodes. There was one where they went on a field trip to a museum. There was something about like a comic book with a rabbit that was a superhero, kind of like Batman. There was that one where Steven Crowder sang the Jekyll and Hyde song. Cause I was Jekyll, Jekyll, Hyde, Jekyll, Hyde, Hyde, Jekyll, 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 Hyde, Jekyll, Hyde. That's not even a joke. <laughs> Steven Crowder was the voice of the brain uh, when he was a kid. All right, everybody, listen up. I made a mistake here. Steven Crowder voiced the brain in 2000 and 2001, but the Jekyll and Hyde episode actually came out in 1998, okay? Here I am, I'm admitting my mistakes. I'm not a perfect human, okay? So get off my back. But there's only one other episode out of all of them that I actually remember, and that episode was bleep. I thought it was just a weird fever dream that I had when I was a kid, like fighting foodons or a big comfy couch or that Ronald McDonald cartoon where they got lost in a maze of mirrors. But I looked it up and all of those things actually happened. I have a lot of suppressed pop culture memories from my childhood. This episode of Arthur is so absurd that I actually can't believe they made it. It aired in 2003 when I was seven years old and I remember it vividly. So, you know, let's all get our swimsuits on and let's dive into this episode. Hi, everybody. I'm here on the set of The Altos. You know, that TV show about the family life of a gangster? This is a Sopranos reference, right? Why would I have watched The Sopranos and know what that show is? I'm seven, Arthur. I'm seven. They've agreed to let me teach you a little something about television. Here is what's known as the bleep. Whenever you hear it means there's something that you're not supposed to hear. Here is the person who is making the Okay, in pretty much every video I make, there's at least one thing that everyone points out that I got blatantly wrong, and it makes me look like an idiot who doesn't know anything. There's this video where her and her dad dress up like Mortal Kombat characters and they're fighting. It was probably a photoshopped image that they just, you know, changed the image then. There was that one where Steven Crowder sang the Jekyll and Hyde song. This might be one of those situations right here because I'm not gonna bother looking this up, but there's not just a guy on set bleeping things out in real time, right? They do that in post afterwards. Obviously, right? <laughs> because when I was a kid, this episode of Arthur made me believe that there was somebody sitting there bleeping out the swear words as the actors said them. So either I was just a dumb little kid or that actually was a job and I'm a dumb little adult. We may never know. So they do a little Sopranos parody sketch thing to give kids some insight as to how and when the bleep is used on TV. So let's watch some of that. Ugh, this is terrible, Apple Betty. It's my mother. Now there was a woman who could make an amazing apple buddy. When she made it, the whole neighborhood stood outside a house. Saying that woman was. If it's okay with you, T, I'd like to give that pastry chef a taste of his own cannoli. Cannolis are phallic. Is he saying he wants to cut off the baker's wiener and feed it to him. Gosh, they just don't make children's programming like they used to, huh? None of you so much as unless I say so, capiche? I vividly remember watching this episode in the living room as a seven-year-old and my mom was in the kitchen like, Scott, what the f are you watching in there? There better not be any f swearing on that TV show. No, I'm kidding. She was very confused though, and rightly so. You probably wouldn't expect PBS kids to be slinging around so many naughty words. Still better than letting your kids watch Jake Paul though, so. Okay, so now that we've been introduced to what swear words are, 
the actual episode starts. DW and her grandma are in a bowls and plates store. I, I don't know, it's boring grandma stuff. <laughs> when some bratty teen comes in with his mom. You know how teens are, always being disrespectful and talking back to their parents. God, teens suck, am I right? Stop that, you'll break something. <sighs> Whatever. That's enough back talk, young man. You can forget about going to that concert tonight. What? You can't do that. I can, and I have. <gasps> Oh, sweet heavens. It's so weird hearing a bleeped out swear word on a kid's show. And it's not even like that SpongeBob episode because yes, yeah, SpongeBob is for kids, but people of all ages can and do watch it and enjoy it. Arthur is absolutely 100% a children's show. So this is very strange. What word did he even say? Hold on. I think he called his mama beach, probably. I don't know though. It kind of looks like a two syllable word. <gasps> Bastard. Maybe, I don't know, what word looks like this? I don't know, we'll figure it out eventually. By the time this video is over, we will have uncovered what the mystery word is, I promise you. Anyway, DW assumes that this word has some sort of magic power because it made that mom drop her vase and she doesn't want to say it to her grandma and ask her what it means because the grandma might drop her bowl. God, that store is so boring. So she decides to ask her brother Arthur what it means instead. Arthur, I have to ask you something. What does mean? <gasps> wow, it happened again. So obviously he's like, what the flying frick, DW? You can't just go around saying piss or whatever the word is. I still don't know what the word is. And especially don't say it around mom and dad. He makes a point to say that. Obviously DW is conflicted, okay? She just heard this word that she's never heard before and it's obvious that it has some kind of power behind it. And say it with me, with great power comes great encumbrance. We all know that. This is awful. How will I ever find out? Just ask your mom and dad. She ends up leaning on her imaginary friend for guidance and her imaginary friend tells her that she should just go ahead and ask her parents what it means anyway, uh, even though Arthur explicitly told her not to, which is a total cop out by the way. Sorry guys, it's not my fault I said. Ball sack at the dinner table. My imaginary friend told me to do it, AKA my brain. So I can't really be held responsible here. Looks like this one's out of my hands. Anyway, my imaginary friend is telling me to go start some magazines on fire in the bathtub. So I'll see you guys later. The next scene is just a dream DW had about what would happen if she said the word to her parents and that's bizarre. <laughs> But then she goes to school the next day and brings the word up to some of the kids there. Um, more specifically, she brings it up to these two horrifying nightmare children. <laughs> Guess she doesn't watch cable TV. Wow, so I can just say it? Just like that? <gasps> no, don't! But you just said different when there's grown-ups around. Oh, F off. You guys were literally rolling on the ground, shouting it like four seconds ago. You think this lady who's standing 15 feet away couldn't hear you yelling, Ass hat? That can't be the word. Anyway, the demon twins tell DW that the reason she can't say it in front of adults is because it will turn them into zombie slaves. Uh, so, of course, she has a nice little fantasy about that. Look at freaking Deadpool 1 and 2 over here breaking the fourth wall, thinking they're slick. Scaredy cat! I'm not! Guess she just wants to stay a baby all her life. Yeah! She doesn't deserve to know the word! Okay. 
Look at this situation. <laughs> they walk out of school and just start loudly bullying this girl right in front of an adult. Look at this stupid little girl. She's just a baby, isn't she? Oh, she's just a dumb bitch. And they said she doesn't deserve to know the word, but she does know the word. She's the one that brought it up. If you're gonna be a bully, at least be a good one. You doe-faced, camel-toed dorks. So this whole thing is really eating away at DW. I mean, it's all she can think about. And frankly, it's not good for her mental health. I mean, she's a wreck. So she hatches a foolproof plan to see if this word actually has magic powers, if it can actually turn adults into zombie slaves. Cool, and they do whatever you say? Uh-huh, but you probably shouldn't say it, ever. It's really only for us older kids. Right. You sneaky little rascal. Well, now that the plan is in full swing, let's spy on the neighbors and see it play through. By my calculations, she'll be saying it in the next five minutes. Okay, DW, time for dinner. I can't see. DW, did you hear me? Oh, there she is. Did she say it? Now, DW. Just a minute. No, not just a minute. DW? I think she just said it. DW, are you listening to me? Uh-oh. Dora Winifred Reed. What did you just say to me? I half expected the mom's face to just pop into frame here and be like, what the f did you just say to me? The first time I saw this when I was seven, my heart freaking sank into my stomach. I was terrified for DW. Honestly, watching it now, I was still terrified for her. Well, either way, the fear is short-lived because the neighbors come over and they rat her out, but her mom basically lets her off the hook. Well, you're off the hook this time because you didn't know what you were saying, but I hope you know now that swear words are not appropriate things to say. Pretty anticlimactic. Why? Because most people are offended by them. It's as simple as that. But why? What do they mean? I guess you could say they mean I want to hurt your feelings. So that's why we don't say swear words. The episode ends with what can only be described as the most not safe for work clip in PBS Kids history. You're a no, you are. You look like a Did you say it to him? What in did they do when you did? Thanks for teaching it to us, you Uh, guys, I think we need to have a talk about this. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we learned a lot today. We learned that saying swear words is bad. Um, we learned that this guy is the one who bleeps them out on TV. And we learned that you can't trust these slimy little good for nothing rat boys. But I still don't know one thing. I still don't know what the word was. What were they bleeping out this whole time? What were they really saying? We need to examine every time it was said, what was the context? How was the word used? <sighs> what could it be? I can and I have. I think I figured it out. I hate to even say it, but I really think they're saying that slur for gay people that starts with an F. I know that sounds crazy and not possible, but that would explain why it's so shocking, right? The show probably wants us to think that it's the other F word you know, frick, but that doesn't really add up. Like, yeah, if somebody drops a frick when you're not expecting it, that might be a little surprising. And if it's your teenage son in public or your four-year-old daughter, you're probably not gonna like that. But does that word really warrant these reactions? <gasps> I don't think so, but I think it would catch you completely off guard if your son called you, uh, 
they get <laughs> right in the middle of a glass bowl store. And if you're still not convinced, take a closer look at their mouths when they say these words. Can you really want <laughs> oh! That is not a frick, and it's not a piss, and it sure as heck isn't a damn. I think PBS really went there. I think they had a bunch of cartoon human-animal hybrids drop a slur on public television. Don't think you can just turn around and make Mr. Ratburn gay and all will be forgiven, okay? PBS is canceled! Did I just expose Arthur? Speaking of canceled, I'm gonna cancel my trip to the sock store because I got some sent right to my front door, baby! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One of my old buddies from high school uh, owns a company now that sells socks. And I mean, come on, look at look at some of these. This one, you got the sloth. I mean, come on, how cute is that? These little Fiesta llamas, I mean, that, that's good for any occasion. And then this one's actually not released yet, but it's one of my favorites. It's a Kraken, ooh, spooky. There are so many fun designs. Honestly, just go check it out on Instagram. It's at right foot. Oh, he also sells really nice sunglasses, actually. Mine are in my car. I'm gonna go get them quick. Okay. Oh, hey, Austin. Mm. It's not sunny, so you, yeah, I mean, you're just gonna have to pretend, but are these not slick? Dude, these are slick. I always have a hard time getting sunglasses that fit my head right. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe my ears are uneven or something. I'm sure the viewers have noticed that, but these are just incredible. They fit right over my ears so perfectly. I love these sunglasses. I swear by these. If you do end up purchasing something, which I highly recommend, you can use the code SCOTT20 and you can get 20% off. 20% off of something that's already affordable? Dude, this is highway robbery. You better freaking go support Joe. He's a hard worker. He's a great dude. I would really appreciate it. You know what else I would really appreciate? If you freaking supported your boy and purchased one of these shirts before they go away forever, dude. I'll put the link to all this stuff in the description. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting my friends. And I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye. It's been a minute since I called you drunk. It's been a minute since we fucked things up. It's been a minute since I called you mine. It's been a hell of a time. It's been a minute since I caused you stress. It's been a minute since we've been up.